Good day! Welcome back to another Math Husay Math 10 tutorial. In this lesson, you will learn how to find the nth term of a sequence. Let me begin by asking you the importance of knowing the nth term of a sequence. Suppose we have a sequence 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on. And we wish to know the 100th term. Do you think that you can find it right away? If we know the nth term or the general term, we can easily substitute the value of n to its corresponding function. So since we want to find a sub 100, and this sequence is represented by the function a sub n equals 2n minus 1. So we substitute 100 to n. So a sub 100 is equal to 2 times 100, that's 200, minus 1 will give you 199. Therefore, the a sub 100 or the 100 terms of the sequence is 199. If you don't know the nth term and you start adding 2 to the preceding terms until you reach the 100th term, it can be exhausting. So our goal in this lesson is to find the nth term of a sequence. And to do it, you should know how to describe and generate patterns. So let's begin. Example number one. So we have a sequence 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. To find the nth term of the sequence, let's describe the first sequence. The 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. We see that each term after the first, after 3, can be generated by adding 1 to the preceding terms. So, if you have the first term, that's 3. You add 1, you get 4. That's the second term. From 4, you add 1, you get 5. 5 plus 1, you get 6, and so on. So, 1, to get the general term or the nth term, 1, which we added to the preceding term, will be the numerical coefficient of n. Now, if we have a sub 1 equals so n, no? So, if a sub 1, we want to get the a sub 1, and n is 1. 1 plus blank will give you 3. So, what number do you think? that we should add to 1 to get 3. So, say we add 2. So, 1 plus 2 will give you 3. And that is the first term. Now, we have the nth term or the general term a sub n equals n plus 2. Now, we still have to test if it will hold true for n equals 2 and so on. So, let's check if we'll get a sub 2 as 4. So, when n is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. That's correct. So, in this case, the general term of the sequence, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on, is a sub n equals n plus 2. Meaning, the sequence 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is defined by the function a sub n equals n plus 2. Let's have example number 2. Again, our goal is to find the nth term of the sequence. So the sequence that we have is 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. Now, we, as we can see, the terms after the first can be generated by adding 2 to the preceding terms. So, the first term is 3. You add 2, you get 5. From 5, you add 2, you get 7. 
you add 2 to 7, you get 9, and so on. So, again, since we're adding 2 to the preceding terms, 2 will be the numerical coefficient of our variable n because we're looking for the n term. So, a sub n equals 2n. Now, if n is 1, we want to get a sub 1. We know that a sub 1 is 3. So, when n is 1, 2 times 1 is 2. What number are we going to add to 2 to get 3? So, in this case, we have to add 1. So, we will still check whether the n term a sub n equals 2n plus 1 will hold true for all. So, for this case, a sub 1 is 3 and that's correct. Now, what if n is 2? So, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1, you get 5. So, you get the second term. So, when you substitute 3 with n, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1, you get 7. So, meaning, the a sub n equals 2n plus 1 holds true. So, the general term of the sequence 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on is a sub n equals 2n plus 1. Example number 3. We have the sequence 11, 5, negative 1, negative 7. And as you can observe, the sequence is decreasing. And the terms after the first can be generated by adding negative 6 to the preceding terms. So, you see, 11, when you add negative 6, you get positive 5. When you add negative 6 to positive 5, you get negative 1. When you add negative 6 to negative 1, you get negative 7 and so on. So, since we're adding negative 6, negative 6 will be the numerical coefficient of our variable n. So, the n term can be written in this way. a sub n equals negative 6n. Now, this time, we are going to think of a number when n is 1. So, when we substitute n with 1, we need to get the first term, which is 11. So, negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. What number do you think that we have to add to negative 6 to get positive 11? So to find the missing number, we consider taking the terms before 11. To get it, so we have to add 11 plus 6. We have to add 6 to 11 because we're moving to the right, uh, from right to left of the sequence. So since it's decreasing from left to right, so, you have to add 6 when you want to get the term before 11. So, 11 plus 6 is 17. Now, 17, we check, huh? 17 minus 6, you get 11. So, we have to add 17 to the negative 6. So, we check 17 minus 6 is 11. That's right. We get the first term. Now, what if n is 2? 17 minus 6 times 2, that's positive 5. And you get the second term. So, in general, we can say that the function, uh, the sequence 11, 5, negative, 11, uh, negative 1, negative 7, can be generated through the nth term. a sub n equals 17 minus 6n. Let's have 
the last example. Example number four. We have negative one, one, negative one, one, and negative one again, and so on. Let's analyze the given sequence since it is entirely different from the previous examples. We see that each term after the first is multiplied by negative 1. So, the first term is negative 1. You multiply it with itself, which is negative 1, you get positive 1. From positive 1, you multiply it with negative 1 again, you get negative 1. So, the third term, which is negative 1, multiplied by negative 1 again, you get positive 1. And so on. So, in this case, a sub n equals, when we want to get the general term, so we take a, a sub 1 equals the base, which is negative 1. Kasi that's the first term. When you raise it by 1, you get negative 1. Right? Now, when n a sub 2, you see that you still have to use the negative 1 as your base. But your exponent should be 2 because you're multiplying the same quantity to itself. So, negative 1 squared is positive 1, which is correct. And that's the second term. Now, the third term is negative 1. So, again, the, the base is negative 1 and the exponent now is 3 because you're dealing with the third term. So, again, the third term is still negative 1. So, in general, we can say this sequence negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, and so on is defined by the function a sub n equals negative 1 raised to the power of n. Please pause the video and try these exercises and don't forget to type your answers on the comment section. If you think this video helps you learn math on your own, give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Remember, ang sikreto para maging mathusay, matuto, at magensayo. See you at the next lesson. God bless us all.